Well, all right. Let's talk about uh, one of the newest members of the Minnesota Vikings, Jonathan Grenard, formerly of the uh, you know Houston Texans, ha- has had an interesting career up until this point. We'll do some stats real quick before we get into the film. First, the one you see on your screen. This is how many sacks he's had year in and year out. So uh, you definitely see kind of, you know, Right off the bat, when you see this, it's always cause for concern, right? The guy who didn't show a lot and then has kind of one big season in uh, his contract year and then gets a big contract, if you're a Vikings fan, and this is all you know, you're thinking, oh my God, what have we done? Now, you know, uh, you look at the kind of two seasons where he had just one sack, that kind of makes you realize, okay, maybe he hasn't had some playing time. And going over here, that that is the case. I mean, uh, it, it's a, it's flipped. So uh, now the most recent season is at the top of the screen instead of the bottom of the screen. But uh, you see that both the two years where he only had one sack, under 300 snaps. Last year was by far and away the most snaps he had. So that makes you feel a little bit better. And in both years that he's had significant playing time, the PFF grades have been very good. Uh, so it's not like he's someone who has never performed well or anything like that and it's more of a I think has struggled to st- you just get the playing time whether that's injuries or just you know being more of a rotational guy but last season got a lot of sacks and still did pretty well in the advanced statistical categories as well so is his tape you know just as good as that stuff I would say so like let's start off with this play we're going to show some uh clips against the Tennessee Titans so what's happening here it's going to be a one-on-one matchup against the Titans left tackle here This is Jalen Duncan, who was the lowest graded offensive lineman last year for the Titans, so not exactly going up against the cream of the crop, and you could honestly argue part of, uh, you know, Grenard's, you know, value was that he got to play the Titans last season a little bit. He had two and a half sacks in this game, although I would mention only got to play them once. Uh, Did not play them the second time uh, he was uh, banged up at that point. But anyway, let's watch what he does on this play, because again, Sure, competition you're going up against matters, but the move you're pulling off is still worth mentioning. And watch how when this play begins, you're going to see him kind of go for this outside move. It's going to be the left arm of uh, Duncan, the left tackle that uh, Grenard is going up against. That's always so important for a left tackle, getting that left arm on Grenard. And kind of is trying to get it in place. But what Grenard does is he uses his right arm so well to disrupt the tackle's left arm. Watch him kind of yank it to the side. So when, at this point, you know, Duncan does finally get his left arm on uh, Grenard, it's not going so well, right? He kind of has it bent around a little bit and almost looks like he's about to break it or something. Doesn't look great in this situation. All Duncan can do is try and push Grenard past Levis. And is he going to be able to pull it off? Well, almost, but Grenard reaches out and knocks the football loose. It rolls out of bounds, but you still push them back 10 yards and get credit for a strip sack fumble there. So that's always very good. Listen, uh, I think that Grenard's hands are very good, and that's a big part of what makes him effective. And sometimes guys who kind of rely on hands, not to say that's all he has, but that's a big part of what he has. Sometimes those guys don't get the credit that really they deserve, because at the end of the day, if you're getting to the quarterback, what's the difference? Like, let's show another play so it's going to be uh, same matchup him versus Duncan one-on-one you see where they are on the screen well okay let's see what Grenard is going to do on this one right when this play begins what does it look like he's doing here well you can kind of tell he's about to try and make a move towards the uh, right side of the screen right now you can kind of see him getting ready to do that so again the left arm Duncan's left arm which is towards our right that's going to be the key thing here watch what Grenard does to it Watch him kind of swipe aside, but to Duncan's credit, he's able to kind of move laterally well enough that Grenard isn't in a great position to get towards the edge. But Grenard does a really good job of being able to read this. Watch him then step back towards the left, and he still gets a sack towards Will Levis. So, you know, Levis helped maybe held the ball a, t- a tick too long there as well, but still, I mean, that's going to happen sometimes, right? And his awareness paired with his hands is really kind of the key aspect of his game. Also, moving on to a play like this, like, you know, again, I kind of talk about his, you know, all that stuff, but the guy's an athlete, too. I want to be very clear. He's not someone who can only, uh, you know, win in those ways. I just think that usually you don't get as much credit as you deserve when you win in those ways. A play like this is a very interesting one, where it's going to be a a one-on-one block here, but not exactly. So it's going to start off as a one-on-one block, and then the tight end is going to go out and run a route. Okay, well, that seems like a pretty good situation for Grenard, but it's actually more than that. It's going to be a tight end screen. So Grenard is essentially going to be unblocked by design on this play. Watch how, you know, Zach Wilson takes a snap, but you see Grenard reads this and he's able to get his hand out and knock the ball away. Again, 
We don't really talk about awareness at at the edge rush position that often. Um, you know, maybe we'll talk about it when we talk about TJ Watt. But other than that, we kind of usually just say like, okay, do you get sacks or do you not get sacks? That's usually what it all comes down to. Well, there are other ways to impact the game. And when I watch Grenard tape, I do constantly see him impacting the game in other ways, which is, again, that that's part of what the Vikings are paying for here. Also heading over here, this is another interesting one. So it's going to be, once again, a one-on-one -on -one block right here. And let's see what happens. Zach Wilson is going to take the snap. And again, you see right here, you know, it's that left hand again of the left tackle, right? Uh, watch what Gennard is going to do with his own right hand. Watch Gennard's right hand. Watch him swipe that left arm away. He's able to get over and has the speed to finish off that sack and get to Zach Wilson. So really good stuff here from Gennard. You definitely do see him, you know, being able to pretty consistently win on, uh, you know, tape, I would say. So yeah, that's just kind of how I view it. And like, listen, I think the other argument you could make with someone like Jonathan Grenard is like for the Vikings, what exactly is the plan here? Like, what's our long-term goal? Are we trying to be competitive or are we trying to, uh, you know, uh, rebuild because they let Kirk Cousins walk? So kind of feels like a rebuild situation. Well, I think an ideal rebuild doesn't take 10 years, right? So if it's, if your ideal rebuild is in three years, well, I mean, the guy's 26 years old, and he will still be good then. So I think that's kind of it. Is I think that they're maybe hoping for a, a faster rebuild, and you know, edge is definitely a position they really do seem to value. So I think that's uh, interesting here as well. So you know, again, you, we can have the the debate as to you know how good of a strategy is this. It is a you know again the contract details itself. Because like, let me back up a little bit. Adding Jonathan Grenard is absolutely a good like thing to happen to your team, right? They're going to be better because he is there. The question is just, you know, giving him $19 million a year for four years, is that the correct decision? The contract itself, four years, $19 million a year, which is $76 million total. $42 million of it is guaranteed. It's still not exactly clear which years those are guaranteed because, again, sometimes... The first two years are fully guaranteed, but then the rest you can kind of get rid of for no cost. Sometimes it's, it you know, the guarantee doesn't seem that much, but later down the line, it actually is a little bit tougher. It, you know, th that's that's kind of the weird thing about NFL contracts. But again, you don't uh, sign a guy hoping to cut him. You sign a guy hoping he'll play all four years. And again, if he legitimately is what he was last year, like with how some of these edge contracts uh, go out, uh, this is not a bad move whatsoever, and you could have kind of found a, a gem here, and sometimes it's better to just make a move like this, get a guy like this, than put a bunch of resources into the draft trying to develop a guy when a lot of times those first round, you know, those late, especially those late first rounders, which is what the Vikings draft picks are right now, don't hit the way you want to. 26-year-old, you know, good defensive lineman, although in two months he turns 27, but still, uh, you know, I think that the Vikings are hopeful that he can they can be competitive soon enough for this to work. I think he's a good player, so I do understand the logic behind all of this, and I think it should be an interesting move to see where uh, where Minnesota goes from here. But yeah, uh, unique move. But those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.